Hello everyone, I'm Fiona Apollo and I talk about all things drawing related, whether that be illustration, animation or comics, all of which I like to dabble in. So how are we all doing today, my little pickles? My little chucky chips? My fruity toots? <sighs> what am I supposed to call you guys? <laughs> Today I want to ramble about Webtoon and the webcomic scene in general, and how its landscape has changed in a significantly short amount of time, as well as the effects this is having on the culture surrounding webcomics, including the creators who partake in it. Before Webtoon went big, the webcomic scene was a lot more diverse, and it certainly didn't feel as crowded, let's say? After webcomics exploded in popularity, this may have been good to an extent, but it's also come with a bunch of issues that affect both readers and creators. The sad thing about when an industry booms is that after a certain point, it becomes almost impossible to maintain a decent sense of community in favour of a more business style approach. And that's a shame, because I think the webcomic community is probably one of the most wholesome and supportive ones I've come across, and I personally would really want that to continue to be the case. With that in mind, I've been very lucky to get some thoughts and perspectives from some very lovely and hardworking comic creators who upload on the main hosting platforms Webtoon, Tapas and Global Comics to get a general feel for people's thoughts on the current scene and what they think could help to make it better. I'm going to be offering my own perspective as someone who has a comic but has sadly experienced some pretty bad burnout due to the points that will be mentioned, so I'm hoping that all of these combined will be able to help to paint a picture for you. I think the main thing that we will be able to determine is people like creating what they love and telling the stories that are near and dear to them. Maybe sometimes you need to step back and take a breather for a bit, but ultimately things will always change around and evolve as time goes on, and if you love to do something, even when other aspects discourage you, you shouldn't be made to feel like you have to turn away from something that brings you joy. But of course, this will all be down to what the feedback is like from those we speak to. I'm going to be dotting them around since the answers were quite lengthy, so I'll be popping these tiny markers in and out of the screen when I'm quoting an answer that was given by one of our interviewees. As well as that, because some of the answers given were quite similar, the full set of answers will be provided in a Google Doc in the description. Sound good? I think that sounds good. And of course, we can't start without getting this in here somehow, but if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It would make me very, very happy. Just like with comic artists liking making comics, I like making videos, and knowing that other people like what you do can be a big confidence booster, so please. <laughs> okay, let's begin. So I already discussed quite a bit about the history of Webtoon in my um, second ever video on this channel from almost two years ago, wow. Time really flies, huh? But essentially, webcomics, and particularly Webtoon as a platform, was adopted as a way to breathe new life into the comics industry in the East, most notably in regards to Korean manhwa. This push to revive Eastern interest in comics also brought on the use of the scroll format, which was more efficient for internet use and became more popular for mobile viewing later on. In the words of our first interviewee, Pilot Obvious, creator of Future Agents, One of the biggest shifts I have noticed is in comic formatting. Page format used to be the majority of comic content shared on comic hosting sites, however, platforms like Tapas and Webtoon have popularised the vertical scrolling format. I believe this is due to the increased use of mobile devices, and I appreciate that a more accessible version of reading has become available to a wider audience. When it came to comics at large before this, traditional print style similar to what you would see in a comic book shop was still very much the preferred format and until Webtoon started to explode in popularity both as a format and a platform, the main way that people would discover new webcomics as well is through very niche circles who would recommend them to each other. There wasn't really a major hub for comics in the same way that Webtoon is regarded as such today, it was very much just what your circle of friends was reading at the time and recommended to you directly. Before mobile reading became the norm, a lot of comics had their own websites and domains which would offer a much more personalised experience when you read them, or if they didn't have their own site, other websites that were used would be able to offer at least some kind of customization, such as Tumblr with comics like Check Please and Rock and Riot. To be honest, that's something I kind of miss with all comics. It wasn't just a generic page that shared a format with a million others, it felt like everything on your screen was helping to create this immersive reader experience. The great thing about the domains was that it allowed a lot more creativity in regards to panelling and presentation as well and it gave creators the ability to include other elements such as games, animations, music, so on and so forth. The greatest possible example of a comic that utilises all of this, and I know it's a controversial one for many, but it's Homestuck. And despite people's views on the comic and fandom itself, we're very aware of how obnoxious we were, okay? But Homestuck had a massive hand in pushing webcomic popularity, I believe, because of the sheer versatility of it. 
And plus, at the height of its popularity, it was getting 1 million views per day. You can't tell me that none of those people followed through and became comic fans in general, right? People were excited to see when something updated, like really excited. Umsuk's update culture was something to behold as it was happening, and that used to be the case for other comics as well. Nowadays, people still have their preferred comics they follow and get hyped about, but it feels a lot more subdued than what it used to be, and that's kind of a shame. I think a lot of that's down to just how many there are currently. It can be hard to get truly excited when your attention is being divided among so many different things. I am thrilled that webcomics are becoming more accessible to the general population. It has boosted readership and has made the concept of webcomics mainstream. Whenever I tell my non-art friends that I make a webtoon, they already know what I'm talking about and usually bring up series that they have heard of or are currently reading. It makes me really happy that this art form is being recognised. On a more negative side, because webcomics have become more mainstream, especially those created by studios or teams, it can put pressure on individuals making a comic as their hobby. Oftentimes, readers don't understand the difference between a professional doing it as their full-time gig and a hobbyist doing it for fun so they put the same expectations on both. We're going to touch more on expectations in a bit, but for the most part, everyone I spoke to emphasised that this boom in popularity is a positive thing, and I agree, even if there are a few lingering issues, which are unavoidable. Sometimes I worry that my video topics make me sound like a negative Nancy, but if it seems like I'm ragging on something, I'm not trying to, I swear, I'm just trying to cover as many sides of a discussion as I can. But yeah, PSA aside, moving on, moving on. What we now have when it comes to the more modern comics landscape is a very centralised hub where the overwhelming majority of comics go in and out of, aka the main webcomic hosting sites, but primarily Webtoon, and this is good because it allows those once niche circles the opportunity to grow tremendously in size. Not only that, these circles obviously didn't do much in the way of income, there are definitely still obstacles, but it is much more viable to see webcomics as a legitimate career path than it was some years ago. In relation to the boom of Webtoon, Indigo, creator of Misguided Ghosts, wrote, I've been working on my comic for about five years, but only started posting it on Webtoon last year. Even over just this year, I feel like there's been a huge uptick in the amount of comics being made, which has been very cool to see. It definitely has its positives and negatives. I think it's great that webcomics are so popular now. There's a lot of variety, which is always good in my opinion, but my main worry at this point would be oversaturation. Especially on platforms like Webtoon, which are churning out new content all the time, I feel like it's made it much harder to hold onto an audience when they have so many series to juggle and keep up with. The centralisation has enabled a sense of convenience and accessibility to more and more comics than before, but personally, I kind of see that as a double-edged sword. While, yes, it means you're not hunting around as much and that more people are likely to read your comic, it also means that people aren't as willing to seek something out even if it may be worth it, and many more will only read or skim through it without engaging with it because, as we said before, readers' attentions are being pulled every which way possible and are finding it harder to commit to small things like dropping a short comment or subscribing. Having that ability to go hunting for one good story at a time can really add to the satisfaction of reading it and makes you more inclined to comment, share it around, or talk to your friends about it. Things always feel more rewarding after you've put a bit of effort into them, and you end up wanting to savour that, you know? Convenience can be very helpful in modern life, but it can also breed a specific kind of laxness, and like what we're seeing with a lot of streaming sites getting rid of shows at the moment, people don't really appreciate what they have until it starts waning. Speaking of streaming sites, this bears another opportunity, adaptation into another form of media. We've all seen books and manga and things like that being adapted into live action and cartoons, but now this is becoming the case for webcomics as well, with shows like Heartstop being the most prominent example. This is already a regular thing that happens with K-dramas, if I recall, but I don't really watch K-dramas, so I can't fully comment on that. However, this comes with its own detriments. Like, for example, the infamous ad campaign from Webtoon, where they effectively diminished the very medium that they represent, and referred to it as what is effectively an IP farm to make adaptations from. You know, it's bad enough that artists have a hard time already, what with animation studios going under and illustrators potentially being taken over by AI, but honestly, this was a really bad fumble and many people would not happy about it, understandably. This, for a lot of people, was the tipping point to start exploring other avenues besides Webtoon to start sharing their stories on other platforms. But bear in mind, there are several other outstanding issues with Webtoon as a platform that may have influenced people's decisions. In the words of TJ Marshall, creator of Codename Colours, I saw a lot more people criticising different aspects of the platform, such as the terrible rating system, the excessive amount of new originals launched each month, the lack of a more in-depth search system, the lack of promotion for many long-time creators, etc. The ad campaign was the tipping point for many people, I think. I even saw some people remove their comics off Webtoon entirely and move them somewhere else. Global Comics was the most common one I'd see. As a new creator, I still think Webtoon is probably the best place to host your comic as of now, but I think the scandal is helping people explore the idea that Webtoon does not have to be the only option. As it stands, Webtoon has kind of a monopoly on the webcomic 
sphere currently because of the sheer size of its user base practically eclipsing that of its competition. So a lot of the major issues we discuss, while they may be present across the board, can more or less be traced back to this specific platform. Webtoon exploding has meant that the landscape has become much more integrated and corporate, and what this basically entails is that as time has gone on, the culture surrounding this aspect of creating has become much more similar to that of other types of media like filmmaking, or maybe more fittingly traditional print comics. It became profitable, and the site that once saw the value in having a space for people to tell stories now seems to view it more as another avenue for profit, which while it can in a way benefit those who approach comics as a profession, it can still cause problems because it conflicts with the nature of making art in general. Art takes time, and time is money, unfortunately. With that said, there are some creators who choose to showcase their comics on different platforms and try not to focus on the more business side of things. Tapas and Global Comics have a really good catalogue of material that don't follow the webtoon model and offer more variation as a result. I'm especially pleased with the selection of print style comics on Tapas. For example, a few comics I'm really enjoying at the moment are Crossroads and It's Warmer Over Here by Jam, which I've spoken about in a previous video, and also Core by Kamish, which is visually stunning. It's really nice and reassuring to see these comics break the mould compared to what we usually get on these platforms, and you can really see the love that gets put into them too. Tapas, while being very similar to Webtoon but with a fraction of the audience, seems to have a user base that is much more willing to engage with stories, and this allows much more unconventional forms of comics to do well on the platform and provides an often much needed change of pace from time to time because of this. And as for global comics, I really want to look into this platform more, because it's really been picking up traction in the last few months as a site that is much more fair in the way that it chooses to showcase the comics that it has. It's been really piquing my interest ever since the incident with Webtoon's ad campaign, and from what I've seen, it is much less focused on regular scheduling or subscription count, which enables lesser known comics to thrive. Hearing from Sparkle Arts, the creator of Celestis on Global Comics, I honestly cannot sing their praises enough. They are caring, kind, attentive, and take feedback on board. They truly care about their creators first and foremost, and that's made such a difference for me and many others in the community. Better upload quality, no file size limits, better choices of categories and even though the app isn't ready just yet, the website works better than most apps on my phone. I've also seen that Global Comics works with specific publishers and allows them to promote their stories under one category, which seems to work really well so far. I honestly have to say, I took a stab at uploading my existing pages to Global Comics and uh, kind of forgot that I scheduled them because, as I may have already mentioned, I'm a little bit burnt out from comic making at the moment, but when I went to check on it, somehow one of my episodes ended up getting a thousand views. That probably doesn't sound like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but when you've been averaging like 20 views per episode on other platforms, you gotta admit, that's a pretty big jump. With that said, this is already quite a large section already, so let's keep it moving and chat about some things that people aren't particularly happy with, and potential ways to improve them. To begin this section, a big thing I want to address is the shift in attitudes from before and after Webtoon went big. Like I mentioned before, when things were smaller and easier, the community felt much more connected and supportive of each other, and it was much more akin to your group of friends all being into the same thing, rather than as casual consumers. I think one aspect of this that ended up becoming a bit of a culture shock was how people are coming to terms with Webtoon and Tapas and others being corporations within their own right, rather than the websites that fostered creativity and community. They still do to an extent, but it doesn't really feel like that takes the same amount of precedence as it once did. The only big shift I've noticed is a general change in the attitude towards Webtoon as a platform and company, largely because of the infamous ad campaign. From my little internet bubble, I feel many people had a pretty positive opinion of Webtoon, and some took it even further and kind of acted like Webtoon was their friend, if that makes sense. I noticed this attitude started to shift right before the ad controversy. Now that Webtoon has become more geared towards generating profits rather than art and stories, this has become much more of an obvious shift. Something I and others have definitely noticed is that while the possibilities have grown in size due to this, so have the demands. Now, this can come as a great positive or negative depending on how you look at it, as well as the situation. As a positive, let's say your comic really takes off, you get a ton of new readers, and they keep coming in consistently. People are really engaging with what you do, and it pushes you to the front pages so that you are able to get discovered by even more people, and if you continue to do well, your comic could get picked up to be relaunched as a webtoon original, and you would be getting paid to tell the story that you 
you put so much love into. It would be a dream come true. But then on the flip side of this, sadly, if you can't keep up or aren't able to get a good start or are maybe lacking in areas like promotion, it can be really difficult to get your comic off the ground. A lot of stars have to align for things to go well, including outside matters such as marketing and just generally interacting with people to get them interested beforehand. I feel like I should mention more about the hustle culture present in the webcomic community. For me, personally, I've never been stressed much by creating my pages and episodes, but the marketing side of things did really hit me hard to the point where interacting on social media became a huge chore for me. I feel like there was an expectation to be constantly posting content separate from the comic to advertise on any platform you could get your hands on. Looking back, I can see that's what led to the burnout I got when I first started posting my comic, and I don't think it's a stretch to say that that's the part of creating comics that burns others out too. I think it's important to not get too sucked into grinding out content just to advertise your work and look for more natural and organic ways to get people interested in your comic. I've had a much better time just gushing about my characters, which has then led some people checking out my story that they're from. And this doesn't even account for the fact that following the shift from niche interest to corporate giant, there are still a lot of people out there who expect all webcomic creators to work for free just because that's the way that people have always done it. Some still view the act of requesting monetary support as a person selling out or being a shill. Look, for some people, it's a hobby that they are all but happy to pour a lot of free time and resources into because they have other means of living. But for some, it is their main source of income. That's just the way things are, and people need to eat. If you don't want to pay, support the more independent creators who aren't consistently on the front pages of Webtoon. No one is forcing you to pay up, but don't cry about the fact that someone else is doing it for free because you've convinced yourself that the circumstances behind creating those comics are exactly the same. This issue of oversaturation has really warped people's perceptions of what actually happens behind the scenes since most people won't see how much work is being put into something if they're only a casual reader. And this can be really detrimental in a lot of ways as far as expectations are concerned. Speaking of that, here is what Leaf said as the creator of the Webtoon original The Last Dimension. I've been working on TLD since 2018. Back then, the, let's call it, professional market was less saturated and there were more chances of growing an audience. I still think Webtoon is a great platform to grow an audience in Canvas, but the amount of new series coming in every, well, almost every day to the originals landscape makes it hard even for contracted creators. The whole industry got a boost during the pandemic, pun very intended, but by trying to catch on, they might have overinflated their goals, and now webcomics are trapped in a bubble of hyperproduction and short-term expectations that will not be fulfilled for the majority of artists. Unless you can afford assistance and release often, the platforms will punish you. Even if your series is popular, if you don't get activity in, say, two weeks, might be a little more, this is my experience from Canvas, it gets thrown to the very last pages. And yet, if your updates are very short and your comic isn't meant to thrive on short updates, it won't flourish either. This is to say that although these visibility problems were present back when I started, they're accentuated now by the fact that so many new works are always popping up on a platform that has no discoverability features. This applies mostly to Webtoon of course, as it's the platform I'm most familiar with, but I don't recall Tapas ever having great features that would allow people to consistently find new stories, despite the hashtags. With regards to Tapas FYI, they do have a fresh section where you could find the very, very latest updates to all comics on the platform, which I think is more than can be said for Webtoon but it still leaves a lot to be desired as far as organisation and promotion is concerned. There are so many things now that you have to keep up with and monitor because of the professional model of doing things that it's just become way too much for the average person. In fact, it feels almost impossible for one person unless you're extremely lucky or have everything in place already. It's not just the creators either, readers to an extent are also feeling pressure to keep up with more comics than they can handle. And even this can lead to things like reader fatigue and also the reinforcement of expectations in their eyes. They don't realise that a lot of what they're seeing is very carefully catered towards them and doesn't reflect how much the person behind the panels can actually cope with if it's just one person with a regular job. I personally do this for fun, but I still feel pressure to make my series as polished and professional looking as possible. On top of that, I feel expected to keep up with a consistent release schedule because platforms promote that posting consistently is how you gain and keep readers engaged. This is really hard to do when you already have a full-time job and want to keep a healthy work-life balance. My boss jokes that I work 9 to 5 with him and then I work 5 to 9 with my comic. Creators, especially those on Webtoon, are exhausted. They don't get days off, they get rate bombed, feel they have to achieve a certain standard no matter the situation, don't get paid enough for their labour, and don't get the same amount of praise and exposure they used to or as much as they deserve. And this is something that desperately needs to change, which I think is why so many people are exploring other avenues on places like Tapas and Global Comics. So what exactly can be done about this? Just focusing on Webtoon in particular for this one point, one very big thing people have been wanting to rectify for ages now is to get rid of the rating system! 
or at the very least, find some way to make it seem more legitimately geared towards actual improvement. As it is currently, it's an absolute nuisance and is very often weaponized against creators by downvoting them to the back pages. During Webtoon's Call to Action event, which was a competition focused on creating short action comics, once the submissions started rolling out on the platform, several people noted that the ratings for the comics had started fluctuating, and it's heavily implied that this was caused by rate bombing to try and sabotage people's entries. This was done because if your submission did well, it got promoted to the front page, albeit not for very long. If I remember correctly, these promos only lasted a couple of hours anyway, which is such a joke. Creators do not deserve this. It just adds on to the pile of things required to make your comics seem as perfectly polished as possible, and we've already pretty much established that this isn't realistic for most people. There is a bit of a culture of bullying that has come to my attention. Being supportive is the way forwards. If you don't like a comic, you could always just scroll on by. The rating system on Webtoon is used pretty exclusively to harass canvas artists, and that definitely needs to go. The rating system has also caused a lot of grief for creators, and I hate seeing how much it hurts my peers. Rate bombing is a real issue that I think needs to be addressed. I'm not sure if that means abolishing the rate system altogether or something else. Whatever possible solution could be implemented to curb this, I think it's worth a shot. People are seriously tired of this going unchecked. As for some ideas that could help make all of these hosting sites more balanced, something that I personally think could be really good for series that are under a certain threshold or are of a certain age with a small view count could be to promote these specific categories on the platforms, or even have them as filters. Tapas already has the fresh section for the latest uploads, why not have a section for series that are under 500 subs or are 3 plus years old, or even combine the two and make it into some kind of slider? It would be a method of discovery to help people find hidden gems that would otherwise be plodding on with very little traffic and people could potentially use these categories as a way of levelling up their comics and tracking their success. The biggest thing that bugs me is just how difficult it is to find new series on Webtoon. Most of the comics I read I find from Twitter or Instagram, not from the actual Webtoon app. I think that a proper tagging and search system on Webtoon would do wonders for both readers and creators, because as it stands, the only ways for people to find your comic in-app is through it being featured, or if someone just so happens to be looking through the genre page at the right time. Another thing we could also do is introduce a category or something that differentiates whether a comic is being made for professional purposes and has a team behind it versus one being made by a lone person. Obviously we have originals and canvas, but I feel like we could do well to split that up a little bit more. I think this would help a lot with helping to curb people's expectations when it comes to how every single webcomic should look. As we've already mentioned, it's not immediately obvious to casual readers when a comic is done for fun or for a job, so I think this could help a lot with that. I don't think there's anything specific I'd like to change about the current sphere, not because it's perfect, far from it, but more so because the faults are shared among most online communities. New people coming in, expecting artists to work for free, feeling entitled to our art, now labelled content to be consumed before moving on to the new hot thing. As more and more people come into contact with authors and artists responsible for the stories they love, the very parasocial relationships may increase the perceived closeness and have people be more inclined towards commenting about what we should or shouldn't do. There are many problems within the industry that are reflected in the behaviours of the community, such as feeling of inferiority unless you have a contract with a publishing house, or the perception of being left behind unless you can keep up with an unhealthy schedule. Having more things in place to guide readers towards a less imposing dynamic with comic creators I believe is the biggest step towards helping to create a healthier relationship with these works. And I also think it would help to put into perspective just how much work it takes to create something that looks to be of a very high quality. More than anything, we need people's perspectives to change, we need to chill out a little bit, curb our expectations, and allow people the chance to take a break. We all know that it doesn't come from a place of inherent malice, it's because you like reading these stories, but if we don't consider the people making them, these stories won't be able to continue for very long. Ah, oh, jeez. I really went and made it sound unappealing to be a webcomic artist, didn't I? but there isn't really any way to deny that there are some shitty aspects to pursuing this kind of medium. It's admittedly very hard to say that you can look past a lot of negatives that are happening at the moment, but I actually went and asked everyone if they still enjoy what they make as much as when they first started, and I'm extremely relieved to say that pretty much every single person I spoke to said that they still enjoyed making comics. And even though I'm unsure of how to move forward with mine, I still enjoy it too. I think I enjoy making it more now than when I first started. At the beginning, I was still kind of figuring out how the vertical format worked and how I could best take advantage of it. Now that I have a better idea, of that, I'm more willing to go out of my comfort zone artistically and that's been so enjoyable. I'd say that creating my comic is more enjoyable now compared to when I first started. 
I think as I've been on this journey, I've improved in a lot of aspects, and now with an improved skill set, I can more successfully execute my vision. While it is disheartening to see negativity spread in the community sometimes, I try not to let that affect how I personally value my work. I love the creating part of my comic. Getting to visualise a story that I've had for so long never gets old for me. I probably enjoy it much more now than when I started because I've really settled into a rhythm of making it. I know my limits and I've luckily been able to balance everything quite well so far. I love making Celestis, I really do. There was a while in early 2022 when I felt very demotivated. I had a prolonged spell of illness and although my art had developed and grown an awful lot, I was really struggling to gain any kind of traction. Being sick meant that I couldn't possibly keep up with the weekly update schedule and that meant the algorithm did not work well for me over at Webtoon. I discovered Global Comics and my joy not only returned but multiplied. It's a platform built specifically with creators in mind, it doesn't matter that I work at my own speed. The upload quality is vastly superior and I feel right at home there which is wonderful. I can't really emphasise enough how nice it feels to hear people say that they still enjoy creating and I'm hoping I can get back into that soon too. I started my comic back in 2018 which was one page a week in print style and in all honesty it was horrendous. It still is actually, but I still enjoyed making it. It was so much fun to learn how to draw all of these different things I hadn't done much of before, and the lack of seriousness in it gave me the confidence to just go at it head first and just enjoy the process of having a task every week. I enjoyed my story and characters, even if I hadn't really planned anything out beforehand. That went on for about three years on Tapas exclusively, and since then I met more comic artists and saw how they worked joined communities and started to notice how most webcomics were being done and decided that maybe I should do it in the more conventional way too, because that was all I was seeing at the time. And also because during this time as well, I started uploading all the pages I had worked on from three years prior to Webtoon, and the first thing that happened was that it got rate bombed. The more I noticed how differently I was doing things and that it wasn't being well received, I tried to alter it and relaunch using the scroll format because I suddenly felt this pressure to do better and possibly catch the wave by assimilating so to speak. But in all honesty, I'm not actually good at any of it. I'm not good at marketing or panel composition or using effects or really anything regarding this medium. I'm not even that good at talking to people. Because of all those shortcomings, the relaunch of my comic got lost in the void and now I can't really muster up the energy or motivation to pursue it anymore. Even though I really want to, I'm just a little bit too overwhelmed with the negatives at the moment. With all of that said, I don't really have anyone to blame but myself for it. I sabotaged my own creation, but I've also seen how heavily it affects other people to see these expectations and the punishments that come with not meeting them, and it's horrible. But I've also gotten to see how happy the small things can make people too, how you feel like you've finally gotten over a hurdle when you've learned to draw something well, or the excitement and enthusiasm you get when discovering a new method that cuts the time you usually take on something in half, or the small joy you get when someone posts a really nice comment and says they believe in you. And a really big one is seeing how your skills improve as your comic progresses over time. Looking at your first episode compared to your latest can really emphasise the amount of time, energy and love you put into it, and I find that really inspiring. And I think that's what I want to cap off with. Thank you all so much for watching. We got a little sappy towards the end there, but I felt like I had to bring a bit of happiness back into it, you know? A very, very big thank you to our five webcomic artists who shared their thoughts and allowed me to use them in this video. I hope I did right by them, and if you want to read the full answers for each artist, the link to the Google Doc can be found in the description. Thank you again, and please consider liking and subscribing if you like this video. Are there any additional thoughts you'd like to add? Any cool webcomics you want to recommend? Any ways that I can improve? please leave a comment as well. Stay safe everyone, bye!